Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Today I have a quick teacher tech tip that I wanna share with you and we're gonna go over how to add audio to your Google Slides. Over the last, you know, eight, nine months or so, ever since distance learning has began, I have been creating tons of digital resources, here, 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 and more like that, that are available in both Seesaw and Google. If you already have been around for a while, you already know I love Seesaw. I think it is so fun and easy to use for those primary learners. In fact, I already made two little tutorials with a bunch of my favorite tips. You can see those here and here. But also, since I make everything in Google Slides, as well since I know so many of you are using Google Classroom I wanted to go ahead and just talk about adding that audio piece which is something that Google relatively recently came out with it's been in the past year that you can actually add audio I do encourage that with these digital activities you go ahead and leave at least an audio recording of your own voice just because it makes it more personal for your students that are doing the distance learning and also with primary learners even though you have all the words and directions listed and written out as you might know many kindergarten first and second grade students still have trouble reading those directions um, and even if they can actually decode the words sometimes they still have trouble following them so if you go ahead and insert this little audio into your slides, students can just click the instructions, hear your voice, feel a little comforted, and know exactly what to do. And that way they don't have to keep calling their mom or dad over to go ahead and, you know, tell me what to do next, what do I do next? They can just click play on your Google Slides and listen to your instructions. We're gonna hop into a little screen share where I show you how to do this, but before I do just that, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. That way you can get all of my new videos that I upload each week. And also, what other teacher tech tips are you looking for? Is there something in the tech world that you've been wondering what to do, especially with creating lessons for your students? Go ahead and ask me those questions down in the comments and I will try to make more videos like this. Let's go. So here I am in Google Slides and this is one of my um, online, my digital reading comprehension passages. This is the one for long vowels with silent E. Now, like I said before in Seesaw, I encourage teachers to go ahead and create their own audio instructions for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps with students hearing their own teacher's voice. And number two, again, when you're dealing with kindergarten, first and second grade students, it can be easier for them to listen to your audio instructions instead of relying on them to read them on the screen. So for this example, students have to read the passage three times, and then each time after they read, they'll go ahead and drag a star down here. Um, and again, it says the instructions, but as you know, with kindergarten, first and second grade, it's nice to you know, tell them what to do first and then they have to answer each question. They'll type in the boxes, and last they'll go ahead and drag over the picture that matches the story that they read. So if that's the instructions, what I can do is I'll want to add some audio to this slide that I can tell students to click first. So in order to do that, there's a few different steps you'll have to take to insert your audio into Google Slides. And the first thing you're going to do is record your voice saying that. So if you record your voice on something like your iPhone, um, you can do that, but it's important to note that for Google Slides, you will need to have it saved as an MP3 file. So I find if I'm already at my computer, the easiest thing for me to do is go to a, an online voice recording site, and I will list a couple in the instructions, or sorry, in the description down below, but this one here, onlinevoicerecorder.com, is very simple. So let me show you how to use this one. Basically, as it says here, click the button and start recording. And just be aware that, you know, there's ads everywhere. This is an ad. Don't actually press start here. So you'll click right here. Click the button to start recording. Hi, students. It's Mrs. Jones. For this passage, what you're going to do is read the story three times. Every time after you read, I want you to drag one of the stars over to cover up the stars on the bottom. Then there are two questions I want you to answer. And last, you'll want to look at both of those illustrations and drag over the one that matches the story you read. Have fun and I'll see you tomorrow. So that's just an example of something I might say. You can quickly hear yourself play Hi, it students, back. It's Mrs. Jones. 
for this path. We won't play the whole thing. And all you do is press save. You will see that has showed up down here. It went to my um, to my downloads and it is an MP3 file. You can see that it is saved already as an MP3. So that's step one, record whatever you want. Now, the next step you need to do is you'll actually have to go to your Google Drive because when you add audio into your Google Slides, it has to already be in your Google Drive. So here's my Google Drive. I'm going to go ahead and upload it by pressing New, File, Upload. And again, mine went to my downloads. And here it is right here. This is the last one I did, 27 seconds long. You might want to, you know, name them once it gets in here. So here it is. It is complete. Perfect. Okay. Once it's in your Google Drive, the next step is for you to go back here and you will go ahead and insert audio and you will look at my drive. Here's the newest one. Like I said, you'll probably want to go ahead and name them and you can do that back here in the Google Drive section just to show you really quickly. This was the one that was just done. So you could, um, oh, you could press rename right here. All I did was right click there and you could press rename long vowel passages instructions. So just in order to make that easier for you to go ahead and insert this, but this is the recording. So we'll insert that. It is creating the audio and immediately it puts this little um, audio sign right here. So it's just a little image right there. And you can see here that it, you know, it's 27 seconds long. And when you click on it, this pops up over here. If it doesn't, you can press it right here, format options. And you have a couple options here. You can choose to start playing it on the click. So students will have to click it. You could also start playing it automatically. So once students are on this slide, they will hear your voice right away. So that could be an option. You have some, you know, size options if you want to make it a little bit larger. And also you could, if you wanted to, you know, insert a text box that says, listen here first. And, you know, you could make it really big. You can make it bold. Just another way to try to get them to, hey, come over here, listen to this first, whatever you want to do. So they would simply click it and Hi, students. they can Mrs. hear Jones. me. For this passage, what you're going to do is read. So that is a very easy way to go ahead and add audio to any of your slides. Now, if it were a passage, this one in particular, this example, students have to go ahead and decode the passage. So that is an important part of the assignment. If, however, this was maybe a, a different assignment where there were a paragraph, there was like a paragraph of text that maybe your students can't read, you could also go ahead and add some audio files here that would actually read the passage for them if that's not what you're assessing. Like I said, for this example, I actually want to make sure that students can read this themselves and instead I'm just giving them the directions. So you would do that on every slide. Um, of course, for this one with this audio file, this explains all of the different passages. So what you could do if you're only assigning one at a time is you can actually just copy and paste this into each of the slides and as you assign them, they can follow the same directions. I almost forgot to share this, so I actually just hopped back on to this screen. So when you go ahead and insert your audio, it is important that you share the audio. So you have to change the settings. So when you go to your Google Drive and let's say you changed the name of it like I did here, Long Vowel Passages Instructions, um, you want to right click it and press share. When you do that, it will pop up like this and you can see here that it is restricted. So they're not going to be able to listen to it. You actually have to do anyone with link and press done. So once you have shared that now and you don't have to change anything over here, it's already changed for you. But this way, when you actually share this with your class, 
or if you're making it, if you're a TPT or and you're making it for other, you know, teachers, otherwise they will not be able to listen to it. So that is how you go ahead and add audio to your Google Slides presentations if you'd like to do that with your kids. The two main things to take away is that the audio file must be saved as an MP3 file, and also it has to be already added to your Google Drive in order to insert into those slides. Now, I did mention in the video that you could go ahead and take a voice recording on your phone. If you do that and send it to yourself, just know that it is saved as a M4A, I think it's called file. It's not an MP3. You can still use it. You'll just, all you'll do then is once it's saved on your computer is type into Google, type in audio converter or audio voice converter, something like that. And I'll go ahead and link some of those in the description as well. And you simply like insert your audio file. That's the M4A and you press that you want it to become an MP3 and it just converts it and you just save it right there for you. Now there, there are quite a bit of steps to follow in order to make this work for you. So if this does seem too cumbersome, you can also use a screencasting type software. Like I use Screencastify. It's just a little app that you can put onto your browser. And that way you can actually take a video or voice recording of yourself and actually show st students how to do the activity with a screen recording. I talked about that in one of my distance learning videos. I'll put the thumbnail right here and I will link that in the description as well if that is the route you wanna take instead. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said earlier, if you have any other questions about Google, Seesaw, Screencastify, any other apps that you might be interested in learning more about for distance learning, drop them in the comments down below and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.